Right, let's say you want to learn this piece. So you find the first position and you do it by looking at the first all the notes that fit your five fingers. Three, four, five, and then you have um, you know this one and two playing the accompaniment in, in the second measure. That's a position and I'm going to mark it in two different ways. Firstly, that showing that these notes belong to this position. Well, actually, if you want to keep going, you can include these ones as well. But in any case, um, let's just st stay with this for now. But also, I'm going to indicate that before I begin, I have to prepare this position. So, um, hand on the keys. And if you watched my Etudes B, M, F, M, I did talk a lot about playing on the edge of the key or inside the key. So in this case, by the way, let me go ahead and sit a little bit further to my left. I've got this inside the key position so that I can easily play the, up to the third beat of the second measure. And then here is where I finally have to move just two fingers, just one and two. And now I'm ready to play this next chord. Here's the pencil. And if I wanted to be really precise, I would put in a little position change right there. And then of course back to where we started right here. So this tells me immediately that I have quite a few things to do physically. Prepare this ahead of time, start, bring out this rhythm, do it correctly, but then as soon as I play this detached, light detached second beat of measure two, work on this. Now notice that not only do I move my first and second finger, but I slightly move my third and my fourth. It's really just the fifth finger that's anchored to that F sharp place right here. And as a result, things kind of pivot around it. That's my anchor point, that's my pivot point. Everything else moves in and out. Now right here, even though I don't have it indicated in the score, but it's implied that basically the way I'm holding that top note and the way I am playing this accompanying chord right here, um, they're of the same length. And so as soon as I, you know, uh, finish down too far, playing this G major triad and I release it, my first uh, order of business is to instantly shift position. And what is my next position, you might ask? Well, of course, it's something else. Of course, it's up to what, three, four, three, four, five. And this five is on a G sharp, so right on the edge of the G sharp means my third is quite deep inside the F sharp. Now, I cannot play F sharp and E with finger three, so while my fingers one and two are capable of preparing the B and D that, that is coming up, the F sharp is going to be played first, and only when I play the G sharp do I finally move my third finger. So I can kind of put in a little, first of all, my main position that comes up to here. But now I'm going to be more precise and say that after I prepare it right around here, you see the big box there, um, I'm now going to also work on moving the third third finger right there just below the G sharp. Now probably easier to see on the big screen 
not sure about mobile devices. Right, so that move, as I play the G sharp with um, that third finger swinging over to E is very, very important. Oh, and look, look at my second finger, boom. Right, so if at all possible, don't rest your second finger on the D sharp. Now here, if I'm talking about position changes, I only need to worry about finger one and then back here. So every red marking, every red box, I should say, is, is an indication of an important move. First box, first, very first one, and then second one, little one, and measure two. You no, know, then that, another little one, another big one for the big position change. Uh, get that second finger. I could even put a little reminder for myself that hey, second finger, you know, maybe mark it in yellow or something. Anyway, so, so that kind of stuff just to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Right, that very important shift. Okay, I can I just highlight everything. But then if I highlight everything, then nothing is highlighted. But anyway, for right now, I'm just showing what I'm talking about. So, right, that move very important. And then we continue. And another big position change. So all of this is going to be pretty formulaic after some time. What is my next position? Now here it's a little bit tricky, because if you look at finger one, when it finally gets to play second beat of measure six, it's all the way down there. And I'm probably going to end up cutting this note short. Unless you have a huge hand, it's kind of hard to stretch it. It's possible. But let's talk about my second finger. That can easily rest on, on the E natural, right there. So my, my first finger is only going to probably go not, not lower than B or C. Therefore, my position change here will only go down to B or C. Not, well, I suppose I can do it all the way down to the bottom staff just to show that I'm including everything. But not down to A. So this allows my first finger to just rest wherever it can comfortably. Second finger is on E. Uh, and so my bracket, which is over here, will again go from here to, oh, and I need to kind of extend it over to here. Because I, I don't want to do something crazy and keep that uh, second, uh, first finger stretched out to A. We'll do it when we get to measure six. Right. And a very similar thing happens here where when we get to the last note of this first line, measure five, we definitely want to practice putting the third finger on G natural. So maybe this box and also I need to grab a natural from somewhere. There it is. So this tells me, hey, finger three, don't be lazy. Put yourself on G natural as you play that B last note of measure five. Right, and then if I'm in this position, if you really think about it, it's a it's a chord that I don't get to play, E minor chord, but that's that's the position we want to be in so that we have the best chance of success. So measure six. And maybe I can move it up a little bit. Not like this, like this. Okay, so measure six. I'm holding the B, I've got this position lined out. And that's where I try to swing over my fingers. Now, 
you know, mm. unless your hand is huge, your first finger is probably going to hit A and E together. Let me look up here again. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm holding the B, top B with finger five next to the black keys. Now, I, I don't have to do it. Notice that for a while I'm able to play with my thumb uh, on the white keys and my fifth finger doesn't have to play any black keys. So it's actually quite possible to, um, to not have to be inside the keys like I had to be in the beginning, right? Here I'm in measure three, I'm playing G sharp with five, and in measure four, A sharp with one. But here, potentially, you can relax and just play it more like this. That even possibly allows you to get a little bit further with the thumb. So one of the ways to show, uh, there are different ways you can tell yourself where to press a particular key, but uh, one possibility is to just use some global arrow indication. Let's say pointing down means outside, pointing up would mean inside, something like that. At least one of my students enjoys this. Right, so when you get to the last note of measure five, let's be on the edge of the white key, let's be ready, and then can get as close as we can be for the for the second beat notes A and C sharp. Uh, clearly, I cannot use my screen here. So uh, A and C sharp. If your hand is not big enough, you'll be close to them. But you know, if you play it like this, it'll be probably dirty. So you can let go of that top B. Now here two possible fingerings. One is just to use four, five, then go to three. Right, so that's one possibility. But the other possibility is if you have the stretch is to use three, four, and the, the lower two fingers, and the advantage is that it puts four on A immediately. So experiment and see what you like. Now here, to play the C sharp with a finger one, of course, you have to have that arrow that indicates that, you know what, you kind of need to slide in here. Uh, you can do it gradually. Right, so as long as by the end of the measure you get that fifth finger next to the black keys, it allows to put your thumb on the C sharp and you're set. There is a different possibility, which I didn't include, and that is... to use that kind of fingering. Now, now that requires quite a stretch. And if you can do it, good. Uh, but obviously not, not for everyone. here maybe you need to let go of that top B if you don't have the stretch and that's fine just to cut it a little bit shorter take a breath because of course we're singing a melody here in our top notes now here I would say if you chose three and four in measure six you choose three and four here or vice versa if you go with four five of course, it'll be four, five again. Now we're in five and we're in measure eight. Oh, by the way, maybe I should add my position changes since I'm trying to be good about it. All right, so that first adjustment goes here. And here, I would actually say, let's do this. Let's get rid of that arrow. And let's anticipate 
need them to be inside the keys like that so that way I slide in on the fifth finger right away and prepare all of my other notes right away and we don't need to worry about it later I think that's a great idea there. so that position change with the arrow so measure six slide in and just do it and then you're pretty much set except for once again needing to shift finger three right there uh, we had the natural as well yep so we do that big change there and again if we're going to stay inside and play this position still inside then you don't need to do much just reposition a little bit tricky I, I, I admit this is not the easiest uh, measure in, in the arrangement but not to fear let's see so here with this uh, big rectangle you notice I for measure 8 finally there I'm putting that A in parenthesis because if your hand allows you to stretch it sure let's add it but if you don't play it it really doesn't change the harmony what's more important is to shape this chord and we're still inside the keys don't need to be to be until that last beat of measure 10 so potentially if you want to make it a little easier for yourself maybe starting from right there in measure not, uh, 7 we can do this move yeah so I think makes playing those lower notes in measure 8 a little bit easier so why not so in measure 8 here is the position adjustment while we're anchoring our fifth finger on on B natural as it sustains itself so the only possible change is if you are playing A natural in parenthesis, just move your finger one over to B as soon as you're done. Uh, but uh, now the first time repeat measure, measure nine. So a slight adjustment. With the plane of the third finger on A, we're going to readjust the position like this. Still on the edge of the keys. We can prepare the whole thing. The stretch is the uh, major ninth. If you cannot stretch major ninth, just kind of get your first finger as close to the C natural as possible, maybe on D there, and then when the time comes, you can just, you know, sometimes I find that people who can barely stretch the ninth can still kind of grab it, see how I'm on the very edge of the D with finger five finger five is really playing sideways but that gives you so much more stretch and the ability to reach these other notes with finger one two three and so on of course notice that in measure 10 I am playing with one on two notes All right, so that makes it easy and as I play this measure I need to be ready to slide in now if your hand is big enough and you can easily reach this you can probably start sliding in right away but if you find it's a bit of a tricky stretch for you wait to slide in until right here right, so that moment is where you really have to practice 
Don't let go of the D with finger five. All right, that little rhythm there. And what is the new position? Well, the thumb kind of slides up, C, C sharp, D. And we, sh we can really easily stay in that position until right here. First, the thumb still stays on D, right? But the other fingers in measure 11 need to start readjusting themselves. So right here, you know, I'm just letting all the fingers be where they are, but on beat three, A natural, played with finger three, and this is where I'm going to put the box, like that, because all I'm really worried about is finger five, doing this move, right? Other fingers just let them do what they, they do. And now with finger five, we're going to have to do some adjusting. Right on it. So two positions, one after another. First finger five over B, and as you play B, let those other fingers spread out over, let me bracket those notes that we're spreading over, right here. So now we're, we're ready to play up to the end of the bracket. And notice that I'm still inside the keys because I'm going to have to play finger one on C sharp in measure 12. So just keeping it ready to do it. Thing that happens in measure 12. My thumb goes back down the chromatic scale, so not much of a position change, just keep moving it down. Now measure 13. I'm asking to reposition as I play the, that second beat with finger 4. So what you're practicing is as you're playing finger 4, you're finding the rest of your notes. So notice my position rectangle goes right on top of that note. And the bracket, if I were to use one, brackets are really not that important. Only goes up to here. Right, those notes is, are the ones I want to shape. Yeah. So into measure 14, it's kind of a tricky thing to do any changes while playing the G, but as I play A, that's when my adjustment happens. Whoops, that's the wrong stamp, graphic, here it is. So I want to make sure that I do this. And we've had to make sudden position changes on the very last note of the measure before that, but at that point it was only one finger. Now we're really making sure a lot of fingers change. Right? So that is something to just practice, that move. Just freeze and check. Uh, measure 14. As soon as I'm done, I bring in my hand like this, while still holding the A with finger 5. Uh, let's see how to prepare it. Finger one has to be on C sharp, so that definitely gets included. All right, so three is on G F sharp uh, with two, C sharp coming up in measure fifteen with one, and that's it. So let's let's get that put into place. Yep. But as, as we get through that measure, we find the sliding of the two suggests a new position. It's a little bit tricky. We're, we're letting three fall on A, we're letting four fall on B, and we're letting the fifth finger just kind of stretch up, but 
don't keep pushing it too far just let it be natural so here just those three fingers like that and so in measure 15 i play with one and two and only on b with finger four in measure 15 will i really worry about putting the fifth finger on e so again a kind of superimposed position symbol right right there all right so just get used to playing the fifth finger sideways roughly at 2 p.m two o'clock So slight kind of adjustment of the wrist, of the hand, uh, of the arm. And then as you get back to that B on beat four, make sure one, two and three are in position. Yeah, so first prepare the five and then prepare one, two, three. And that takes care of the rest of this phrase because all the first finger is doing is just going through the motions. And at some point if your stretch doesn't allow you to hold those long notes, just let go. And then here, as soon as you're done with the 1-1 one, one slide, readjust right here the whole octave f sharp f sharp all right and that brings us back to the beginning i'm not going to obviously go through it since we've got it all marked up and figured out but um, let's look at measure eight again we're on the edge of the keys i'm gonna get rid of this over here now into me into the second time measure which would be 15 16 17 18 uh, we have to again stretch to play the a sharp a c sharp e a major triad with one two three and you'll probably want to let go of this b unless you have the stretch for it yeah. So let's try it again. So you're playing through measure eight, and now the second time measure. As soon as you're done with that chord, big, big, big position shift. Boom. All right, for, for this next measure. So I'll put it in. Just like that. Again, those two notes, two white keys in, measure, in that second time measure are played with a thumb. And we get to finger five, and of course, guess what? As soon as we do it, we've got some other notes coming up. We have to stretch out their position. So let's put that in right here. E to E octave. And that's the next page so let's close here let's open this up and get to letter B real quick huh. they seem to be cut off that's bizarre I just realized this seems like I need to re-upload my um, my score how interesting anyway well I'm not gonna oh it appeared there was a glitch. Good. So uh, here is my last line of section A. And no, I think I'm really confused. Yes, I'm very confused. I thought that second time measure is the last line of that page but it's not right one more page so measure 19 last line of the first page mm -hmm. 
you're in position, but as soon as you play the downbeat of 19, you just want to reposition and let go of that top note. Don't want to be holding it. And as soon as you play the second beat, you need to be in position to play as many notes as possible for what's coming up. I would stretch out the AA octave. And let's move this out of the way. Kind of like this. All the notes are ready except for E flat that's coming up. So I would actually prepare it as soon as F sharp right here. So let's grab it A flat. Put it maybe right there. Just teach your second finger to move to the black key. Same thing there, you probably want to just let go of the A and make sure you can slide the like this as you play the E flat. Okay. As soon as you're done with the second beat and measure 20, again, big change, big position jump. Now there, to put second finger on F sharp, I would wait until the last note, like this. I mean, you can try it, it's a bit of a stretch. Seems like it's quite possible to teach your hand to readjust the second finger to go to F sharp right here. Yeah, maybe I can put in the sharp reminder like this. Same thing, you let go of the D right there, you stretch to nail this chord. You can kind of pivot as far as you can while holding on to that top D, but then let go when you finally cannot get to that B natural with the th thumb. Right. However long you need however short you need to make that D, B. Now here, right away, I would put the D sharp with the, the release of the second beat chord, so right here. So you can play the rest of this measure e uh, quite comfortably. As soon as you get to measure 20, 21, 22, that's a big stretch. Now, if your hand doesn't quite allow you to do it comfortably, you can experiment being inside or on the outside. I find inside here is easier for me. It's a shorter line between F sharp and E than if I went diagonally from F sharp to E here. But you again, up to, up to you. But what I find is that if you cannot play that chord together, no problem, just roll it. Yeah, start down below and then just go through those notes quickly. But if your hand is big enough, just stretch it out. instead of the dot with the tenuto mark here um, I decided to keep to make this harmony longer I right, just kind of keep it sustained a little more all right so of course here we'll need to bring those two notes in position like this notice also that I'm having to so let's do it this way. I have to put the, th the fourth finger on E as well, like that. And then, finally I get to that second page, I'm going to need to adjust my position on that E note, beat four. All right, 
fret. So most important part is the thumb. And if you stayed inside the keyboard for this measure, which I think is the better way, then you've got no problem for what's coming up in measure 23 on the next page. Write on that E natural, check your position. Okay, well now let's let's get over here. So you're in position, you're playing measure 23. Same thing as before, adjustment. Make sure we're ready. probably just move my position on this E right here. First here, before beat 3, and then with beat 4 make sure to practice that position adjustment. Okay? Free, literally, every time you need to make a position change, freeze and check that spot because if you're if you're not doing this there is no point to go on All right that's a very interesting position shift i'm holding on to five in measure 24 and after that first beat i'm trying to squeeze the second finger over while holding on to the five so that i can take over without re strike in the F sharp. Right, so as I play that second beat, my second finger lands on the F sharp. Right, first I just get it ready, and then second beat, my first finger covers C and D, and my second finger is allowing the F, the melodic F sharp to sustain itself uninterrupted. So it's an interesting trick, isn't it? However, as I do it, fingers four and five need to land in position as well. So let's include them right here. So first beat, prepare the position, strike while holding the F sharp and immediately put four and five in its position and then you just play the notes and then here a little 16th note rest just to give you time to do this adjustment now here I would probably go back outside because here I'm still inside maybe I can slide down here Maybe that's the moment where I'm kind of doing it right as I play that tricky uh, over the fifth finger position. So what, maybe that right there would be a good place to just get the thumb back out onto the edge of the white keys and now when I get to that B, now I have the 16th note rest, that's when I do my position jump. Cover that G major chord. Yeah, so five strikes the last note. Adjust fingers two and three right here. And now just one and two play there as written. Now here, <laughs> probably a good idea. Make your way inside the keys again because I have to play that F sharp so I'll put it right here but you can do it gradually all right so by the time you get here you're inside as soon as you're done with that chord check that you're in position whoops whoops mm. There.
and we are into section B where same melody but the accompaniment changes a bit of that swing rhythm written out swing with pedal I'll do a separate tutorial on that section in a different video. I hope it was helpful.